In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth, fiat. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of Saints, Our Lady of America. Our Lady, Mother and Queen of the Holy Divine Will, St. John Vianney, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we're in the middle of volume 17, May 1st, 1925. And Jesus just said that he was the new son of souls. Jesus was to give light to all people. Jesus was to embrace all people with his divine light. Jesus was to bring to all the supreme majesty, offering the divine majesty, an act from Jesus himself, which would contain all acts, and to make superabundant light of his divinity descend in all people, past, present, and future, in order to rescue them. So then he says, in addition to me, there was my celestial mother, who received the unique mission as the mother of a God son. Our Lady had the office of co-redemptrix of all mankind. So here, we have to understand what Jesus is saying. Mary is Theotokos. She is the mother of God. Uh, this is what's so astonishing. She, it is so astonishing who Our Lady is. Our Lady is the, has the office of co-redemptrix of all mankind. She stood at the foot of the cross. Uh, she shared in the crucifixion of Christ. For Our Lady's mission, a divine and celestial, ter, uh, celestial and terrestrial, would never, no one would ever be equal to Our Lady. But this was not enough to draw the word of G Jesus Christ into her maternal womb. It was necessary that the Mother of God put into action all this abyss of graces and, and gifts and in, by embracing all souls, past, present, and future by loving all souls, past, present, or future, by repairing and adoring the supreme majesty for all souls, past, present, and future, in such a way as to accomplish herself all that the human generations owed to God. So again, here, Our Lady, again, this is why as Catholics we are so, so blessed to have Our Lady. And again, every house should have uh, uh, an image of Our Lady. Uh, not only an image of Jesus, but an image of Our Lady. Uh, every home should have should crown Our Lady at least in the month of May. Um, if you have a statue of Our Lady, you know buy crowns for her. She is the Mother of God. She is the Queen of Heaven and Earth. We have to begin to recognize how fortunate we are 
that Jesus gave us his own mother as our mother. She accomplished herself all that the human generations owed to God. Therefore, in her virginal heart, immaculate heart, Our Lady had an inexhaustible vein for God for all souls, past, present, and future. When the divinity found in this Virgin Mary compensation for the love of every person, past, present, and future, the divinity felt enraptured and formed in Our Lady its conception, that is, the incarnate Word, Jesus Christ, the incarnation of the Word of God, Jesus Christ. And as Our Lady conceived me, Jesus, Our Lady took on the office of co-redemptrix, and Our Lady shared and embraced together with me all the pains, all the substitutions, all the reparations, the maternal love for every soul, past, present, and future. In the Immaculate Heart of Mary, there was a fiber of maternal love for every soul, past, present, and future. This is why, in truth, with justice, when I, Jesus, was on the cross, I declared Our Lady Mother of all mankind. Our Lady ran together with me, Jesus, in the love and in the sufferings in everything. Our Lady never left me, Jesus, alone. And if the Eternal One had not placed so much grace in Our Lady as to be able to receive alone all the love of man, all mankind, the Father would never have moved from heaven, uh, Jesus would never have moved from heaven to come down upon earth to redeem mankind. And here is the necessity, the convenience that Our Lady had to embrace, had to suppress everything as befitting the mission of the Mother of the Word of God. That's Our Lady. Uh, again, we should honor Our Lady uh, inside and outside of our house. We should honor Our Lady as Mother and Queen of heaven and earth. We should make sure that especially during May, her month, we crown her uh, um, uh, letting the whole world know that she is our mother and our queen. When an office is unique, as a consequence, nothing must escape the one who has it as mission. He must have everything under his eyes so as to be able to offer the good he possesses. He must be like a true son that can give life to everyone. So, were I, Jesus, and my celestial mother. The, 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 the three fiats now. Now your mission, Louisa, your mission is making known the eternal will of God that is braided with mine and with my dear mother. So here, uh, every time you look at a braid, you should think of Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. This is, this is Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. And since it was to serve for the good of all mankind, it was necessary to centralize the eternal son of my most holy divine will into Louisa, the one soul, so that as a unique mission, this son might let its rays blaze from Louisa and all might take the good of its light. This implies that for the decorum, the honor of my most holy divine will, I, Jesus, had to pour into you, Louisa, as bears and preparations, such graces and light, such love and knowledge of the divine will as to befit the residence of the Son of my divine will. So here's another title of Louisa. Louisa, the residence of the Son of the will of God. The S-U-N. Even more, you, Louisa, must know that just as my humanity in its office of Redeemer conceived all souls, in it, the same was to happen in you, in your mission, in your office, Louisa, to make my most holy divine will known and make my most holy divine will reign as you continue to do your acts in my most holy divine will for everyone, past, present, and future. All souls remain conceived in your, most, in your will, Louisa. And as you, Louisa, keep repeating your acts in my most holy divine will, you, Louisa, forms, form many sips of, div, of life of divine will in order to be able to nourish all souls, which are as though conceived in your soul, Louisa, by virtue of my most holy divine will. So I think of that. I mean, this is something that we have to understand. Louisa has done this. The kingdom of God is here because of Louisa. It's, it's very clear. Jesus says, when I accomplish everything that I have to accomplish in you, Louisa, I will take you to heaven. That happened in 1947. The next year, Israel became a nation. Louisa was moved into the church in 1963. 
1967, Jerusalem became the center of Israel. In uh, 1968, Padre Pio went to heaven. Uh, in 1986, uh, the association, Luisa Picaretta, was, was brought into the church, a canonical institution. In 1994, the, the cause of Luisa began. In 1996, the volumes of Luisa were taken out of the Vatican, all 36 volumes. In, uh, 19, in 2005, the cause was completed and the, and the writings went back to the Vatican. Here it is, four years later, the Vatican is astonished by these writings. We have to understand the time we're living in. Jesus says, I've waited 6,000 years to give these writings to the world. And, and now we have them. I remember in the 80s, all we had was sheets of paper, mimeographed. Do I hear an amen out there, brothers? No. Okay. <laughs> So I, you, look at the time we're living in. This is just fantastic. I just can't, I cannot get over it. So, again, Louisa forms the sips. We are to sip this. We are to be nourished by Louisa. I mean, this is why Jesus has given Louisa as our third mother. Uh, it says, do you not feel how in my divine will you embrace everyone, Louisa, past, present, and future, from the first Adam to the last soul, which is which to exist on earth. And for everyone, past, present, and future, you, Louisa, want to satisfy, love, please, the supreme will of God, binding the supreme will to everyone, past, present, and future. You, Louisa, will remove all obstacles that will prevent the divine will's dominion in souls, domination in souls. Making the divine will known to everyone, past, present, and future, even in the sufferings, you expose yourself, Louisa, to satisfy for everybody this supreme will, which so much loves to be known and to reign in the midst of souls. This is Louisa's job. And our God is, is offering this to us, and, and he's showing us Louisa as he showed the wise men Jesus. He's showing us Louisa as he explained this to the shepherds at Bethlehem. It, it, there's very, very, very few that want to embrace this. Why? Because everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody wants their own thing. Jesus says, I have to find the souls that are docile. Docile to whom? To the Holy Spirit. And, and when we are docile to the Holy Spirit, then Jesus says, here is what I want. And it's, it's, what is it? That the supreme will be known and loved and reign in the midst of creatures. Who is to do this? It's done by Louisa. It's all accomplished. Everything is done. Everything is done. And now Jesus says, I'm holding time off, if you want to say, to allow the souls to share with what I gave to Louisa. That's us. And he's going to give to us as much as we want. So the more that we read, study, and put this into practice, the more God is going to share with us this, this gift that he gave to Louisa. So he says, To you, Louisa Picaretta, the firstborn daughter of my holy divine will, it is given to make known the divine qualities, the divine value, the divine good that the divine will contains, and its eternal sorrow of living unknown, hidden in the midst of the human generations. Even more, despised and off offended, by the evil ones and placed by the good ones at the level of other of another virtue. This is this is the sad part. I know so many souls that says. I mean, I got a call from somebody who's been reading the Divine Well for about twenty years, and, and they said, "Oh, I love this novena. I'm going to do this no, no, other novena to the saint." And I'm going, "What is wrong with you? you?" Even more despised and offended by the evil ones and placed by the good souls at the level of another virtue. That's not the divine will. And if it were a, a, a little, as if the divine will were a little light which was lit by mankind as virtues are in comparison with my divine will. Not the eternal son that my most holy divine will is. See, Jesus says that the saints are like a candle lit in darkness. 
and I love flying out at night. I've told you this before. When you take off at night, you look at the you look at the ground and you see all these lights, and it's so beautiful. But that's the saints. Jesus says, Louisa, you are a sun at high noon, giving light and life to everyone and everything, and you cannot see those lights. Louisa is going to eclipse all the saints. And he's asking us to share uh, the, this, this son of the divine will that Louisa has. He's asking us to possess it with Louisa. The mission of my holy divine will is the greatest mission that can ever exist on earth and there is no good which does not descend from the divine will. There is no glory which does not come from the divine will. Everything is centered in the divine will. Our interior works and those which we, triune God, have delivered, the creation of the angels, the, uh, of the world, the, of men, of virtues, of merits, of all predestinations, of all goods, of all the glory of chosen ones, all the mysteries of the infinite love which are still unknown to mankind, the past, the present, the future, all in one prime act and in act in one single point. He says all of that exists is found in the divine will. And that's why our God wants us to enter into this. This is not a saintly thing or a good thing or a holy thing that the church has seen in the last 2,000 years. This is, this is magnificent. And, and it, as you read this, as you study this, it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer what God wants. He wants his kingdom on earth, in us, as it is in heaven. Therefore, be attentive and do not want to waste time with doubts or uncertainties. The same thing for us. Be attentive in reading and studying. Stop wasting your time with doubts and uncertainties. Everything I, Jesus, told you for this mission was necessary not for you, but for the honor and the glory, the knowledge and the sanctity of my most holy divine will and of its dominion in souls. And since my will is one, one was to be the, uh, the creature to whom I entrusted it to, that's Louisa, through whom the divine will would make its rays blaze to do good for all mankind, past, present, and future. And that's Louisa Picaretta. That's Jesus says this the divine will is going to shine forth through Louisa. Now, what is it going to take to convert the Jews, the Muslims, the Buddhists, the Hindus? What's it going to take to convert the whole world to be want want to be Catholic? Jesus shows us right here. Louisa. The the the, the divine will is going to blaze through Louisa and convert everyone. You you cannot believe what's coming. And the whole world's going to know Louisa. She, that's why Jesus said at the beginning of this, he says very clearly, to you firstborn daughter, who is the firstborn son of Adam? It was Cain. The first murder. The first sin was murder. Who is the firstborn of Jesus and Mary? Louisa. Look at the difference. We have been living in misery since Adam fell. Now Jesus says, I want to change that. How? Through the newborn, the firstborn, Louisa Picaretta. 517, May 4th, 1925, a continuation of the previous chapter. The mission of the divine will reproduces on earth the image of the most holy trinity. After writing what was written above, I, Louisa, began to do the adoration to my crucified Jesus, fusing all of myself in his most holy divine will. Okay, so this is... Again, fusing is what Jesus teaches Louisa from volume 11 through volume 19. How to fuse yourself in the divine will. Fusing yourself in God's most holy divine will. How, what is fusing? It's welding. You take two pieces of metal and you weld them together and they cannot be separated. The weld is stronger than, than the metal. I began to do the adoration to my crucified Jesus, fusing all of myself in his most holy divine will. Do you see what God wants for us? He doesn't want us to be separated from him ever again. And when we learn from Louisa in volume 11 through volume 19, we learn how to fuse ourselves in the divine will. Again, that's reading and studying and putting into the practice. My beloved Jesus came, in, came out from within my interior because that's where Jesus dwells and placing his most holy divine will close to mine, 
and all tenor, as he told us, my daughter Louisa, you did you write everything on the mission of my most holy divine will? And Louisa says, yes, yes, I wrote everything. And then Jesus said, what if I told you that you did not write everything? Rather, you have left out the most essential thing. Okay, now this is the most essential thing about Jesus' divine will. This is what Jesus wants you to know, the most essential part of the divine will. So, continue to write and add, the mission of Jesus' holy divine will will be conceal, will conceal the most holy trinity upon earth. So, God wants the reflection of the trinity on earth. Just as in heaven there are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, inseparable but distinct among themselves, who form all the beatitude of heaven. In the same way, on earth, there will be three persons who, because of their missions, will be distinct and inseparable among themselves. The first, the virgin, with their paternity, which conceals the paternity of the celestial father. So under the paternity of the father is the maternity of Mary. And enclose the Father's power in order to fulfill Our Lady's mission of Mother of the Eternal Word and co-redemptrix of all mankind. The second, Jesus, Son of God, is now Jesus, Son of Mary. My humanity for the mission of Redeemer, which was to enclose the divinity of the Word without ever separating from the Father and the Holy Spirit. Why? In order to manifest my celestial wisdom, adding the bond of becoming inseparable from my mother and now for you, Louisa, for the mission of my divine will. Okay, so under the Holy Spirit is Louisa. For the mission of my, my holy divine will, as the Holy Spirit will display his love in you, Louisa, as the Holy Spirit manifests to you, Louisa, his secrets, the prodigies of my most holy divine will, the good the divine will contains in order to make happy now with Louisa, the souls who will give themselves to knowing how much good the supreme will contains. The souls who will love the divine will and the souls who will let the divine will reign in their midst. The souls who will offer their souls to let the divine will dwell within their hearts that the divine will may be able to form its life in them. So under the Holy Spirit is Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa. Hopefully that's us. This is what the Pentecostals are praying for. This is what the Charismatics are praying for. You know, the century, the 20th century was consecrated to the Holy Spirit by Pope Leo XIII. And uh, what happened after that consecration in 1905, the Pentecostal movement began. And, and, and in 1961, John Paul, John the 23rd prayed for a second Pentecost. What happened after that? In 1967, the, the charismatic renewal began. In uh, 1998 was the year of the Holy Spirit. And John Paul II prayed in the piazza in, the, in, in uh, St. Peter's, Come Holy Spirit, Vene Creator Spiritus. Okay, the whole century of the Holy Spirit, what happened in that century? Uh, Louisa died. Louisa was brought to church. The cause began. The writings were taken out. I mean, that the whole prayer for the Holy Spirit was so that the divine will reign. What did what did our lady say to Father Gobi? Everything's complete. She said that in 1997. Why in 1997? Because in 1996, the writings came out of the Vatican. Everything was complete now. Uh, where are we? This is, this is the most glorious time to be alive. And, and it, it's very amazing. This, right, the sister has these things, the Holy Spirit. This whole, this whole booklet, when you read this, is about the divine will. This whole booklet is about the divine will. And, and who is the one who represents the Holy Spirit is Louisa. Again, the Vatican is reading this, and the Vatican see this very clearly. There's no question and we know that, that in Trani, they've already read all the writings. It took them 11 years to write it. And they said to the, the Vatican, we want Louisa canonized. We believe what she says. And now the Vatican's reading them. 
And the Vatican says basically the same conclusion. Well, we see nothing wrong with what's being said here. There's, there's nothing against faith and morals. What, what is happening here is, is the, the reflection of the Holy Trinity on earth is now. Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. Uh, Jesus says, the one on my right is my mother. The one on my left is Louisa. Uh, again, the, what we see is the three that suffered the most. So here it is. And the bond of inseparability will be added between you, Louisa, Mary the mother, and Jesus the eternal word. So what did we have before uh, uh, the last 2,000 years? We had the, the, the greatest gift that Jesus said that he gave to the Old Testament was transfiguration. Jesus Moses and Elijah. And for the last 2,000 years, we've had the reflection, I mean, we've had Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. How to become a saint. And now in the new era, it's Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. How glorious this is. These three missions are distinct and inseparable. The first two have prepared the graces. Jesus and Mary prepared the graces, the light, the work, and everything of, with unheard of pains. Why? For the third mission, Louisa's mission of my most holy divine will, in order to be all fused in the divine will without ever leaving their office so as to find rest because my divine will alone is celestial rest. These two missions will be repeated because of their exuberance of grace and of light and of knowledge and it's so great that all human generations can be filled with them even more they will not be able to contain all the good which they contain. These two missions, Jesus and Mary, are symbolized by the sun, since in creating it, it filled it with so much light and heat that all human generations can enjoy the sun in superabundance. Nor did it take into account that since in the beginning of creation there was only Adam and Eve on earth, I, God, could have placed in the sun enough light to be sufficient for only the two of them. And then making the sun grow in proportion to the growth of the human generations. But no, no, I, God, made the sun full of light, just as it is now, and will be. It's always a riot to listen to the scientists. In a couple billion years, the sun will be out. How sad. I thought he said a million years. But it's the sun is going to be like this for us. This is why it was made. There's nothing to be afraid of. God has got everything planned. God is in charge. For the decorum, the honor of our divine power, our divine wisdom, our divine love, our divine works are always made with the fullness of all the good which they contain, nor are they subject to increase or decrease. So, I, God, did with the sun. I, God, centralized in the sun all the light which was to serve up to the last, the last man. But how much good does the sun not do to the earth? What glory does the sun not give to its creator with its mute light? I can say that for the immense good that it does to the earth with its mute language, the sun glorifies me, God, and makes me know, known more than all the other things together. And this, because in its full, it is full of its light, it is stable in its course, and when I, God, looked at the sun, which was so much light only Adam and Eve could enjoy, I also looked at all the living, past, present, and future, and seeing what the light was to serve all people, past, present, and future, and my paternal goodness exalted with joy, and I remained glorified in my works. And so I did with my dear mother. I filled Our Lady with so much grace that Our Lady can give graces to everyone, past, present, and future, without ever exhausting even one of them. And so I, Jesus, did with my humanity. There is no good which the, my humanity does not possess, the very divinity to be able to give it to whomever wants, whoever wants it. So I did with you, Louisa. I, God, enclosed in you, Louisa, my most holy divine will. With it, I enclosed myself. I enclosed in you, Louisa, its divine knowledges, its divine secrets, its divine light. I, God, filled your soul, Louisa, to the brim, up to the brim so much that what you write is nothing other than the outpouring of, of what you contain of my most holy divine will. So Jesus says that the 36 volumes is Louisa exiting the ocean of the divine will and it's the drips of water off her body. 
That's what the 36 volumes are. And our, our God is asking us to dive into the ocean of the divine will with Louisa. Never go, never separated from Louisa. These 36 volumes are just a hint, a sliver of what God is going to do for all eternity. And he's asking us, would you please read and study, prepare yourself for the kingdom. It's coming. It's going to, it's here with Louisa. Heaven is here with Louisa. And, and the only person I said that's upset about this is the devil. He, his kingdom is coming to an end. And even though it now serves you alone, Louisa, and a few glimmers of light to some other souls, I got him content because being light, it will make its way by itself more than a second son. That's exactly what Padre Pio said Louisa is, a second son, giving light and life to everyone and everything. Just think of the sun setting at, at 6 p.m. and another sun coming up in the east at 6 p.m. There's no more darkness the devil is going to be gone. Heaven's on earth. This is what's so glorious about this gift. This is not a good or holy or saintly thing. It's not. This isn't human. This is a share in divinity. And again, the priest does that every day at Mass by putting the drop of water in the chalice. May we share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. That prayer has been fulfilled because of Louisa. More than a second son, in order to illuminate all human generations, in order to bring about the fulfillment of our divine works, that our divine will be known and our divine will be loved and that our divine will reign as divine life within souls. It's not just human life. This is why I can just see the theologians in the Vatican going, man, this is going to change everything. It, this is not this is not the norm. We haven't this this is why John Paul says the new evangelization. This is the new evangelization. Can you imagine every gospel, every, I mean every homily, every talk, every bishop, priest, and deacon preaching the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven? There's no more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints. Every Jew, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, atheist, Protestant, Catholic is going to be converted to live the Catholic life as Jesus wants us to. Uh, it, this, is, it, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. This was the purpose of creation. This was its beginning. This will be its means and its end. What? It's to let the divine will be known and loved and reign as divine life of souls. Therefore, be attentive. If you've ever been to a, a Byzantine church, it's so wonderful because they're going to understand this much quicker than we are. Be attentive, be attentive. They say that at every sacred liturgy. Be attentive, be attentive. Because this is about rescuing that divine will with so much love wants to dwell in all souls. But the divine will wants to be known. The divine will does not want to be like a stranger. Rather, the divine will wants to give out its goods and become the life of every soul. But the divine will wants its whole, rights whole. The divine will wants its place of honor. The divine will wants the human will to be banished. The, and the human will is the only enemy for the divine will. The only enemy for man. That's why we go to confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Your human will is so strong that you sin. That's the, it's your enemy. You've got it. Who is your enemy? It's, it's, it's your human will. God wants you to live in his most holy divine will. He says, there's the rest. There's the peace. There's the joy. There's the happiness. His most holy divine will. So that's why he says, this is about rescuing the eternal will of God that wants to love and dwell in souls. It wants to be known. It wants to have its goods. It wants to become the life of every soul. It wants its rights whole. It wants its place of honor. It wants the human will to be banished. Okay, that's what we do. When we do our prevenient act, that's what we're doing. We're banishing our human will. 
we're, we're, we're living in the divine will. The mission of my holy divine will was the purpose of the creation of man. My divinity did not depart from heaven, from its throne. My holy divine will instead not only departed, but descended into all created things and formed its divine life in them. However, while all things recognize me as God, and I, God, dwell in all things with majesty and decorum, decorum man alone drove me away. That was Adam drove God away. That's why we're so miserable. We've, we, we've got to get back to God. And, and it's not just the communion that we receive uh, at Holy Mass for 15 minutes where we adore him, love him, praise him, thank him, and glorify him, worship him. But God wants the perennial communion that Adam possessed before the fall. This is the preternatural life of integrity, impassibility, immutability, and immortality. He wants us to live that preternatural life. He doesn't want us to live this, this miserable human life. He wants us to live a divine life. But I, God, want to conquer man and to win mankind. And this is why my mission is not finished. So I, God, have called you, Louisa, I, God, have entrusted to you, Louisa, my own mission, that you, Louisa, may place the one who drove me away on the lap of my most holy divine will, and everything may return to me, God, in my most holy divine will. Again, who brings mankind back to God? It's Louisa. I called you, Louisa. I entrusted you, Louisa, with my own mission to ha that you, Louisa, may place mankind back on my lap. They may turn everything to me, to my most holy divine will. And then he says to Louisa and to us, Therefore, do not be surprised at the great and marvelous things that I, God, may tell you, Louisa, for the sake of my mission, nor or at the many graces that I, God, have given to you, Louisa, because, Louisa, this is not about making you a saint, but it's about saving human generations, past, present, and future. This is about rescuing a divine will for which everything must return to the beginning, back to the Father, back to their origin, from which everything came so that the purpose of my most holy divine will may have its complete fulfillment. This is why he gave us the Our Father. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's, that's Louisa's mission. And our, our Lord is offering this to us. Again, he is expecting more from you than from all the saints combined. And so he says in volume 11, uh, uh, March 8th, March 13th, the beginning of volume 11, I want basically a second baptism. And what does that mean? It's a baptism of victimhood. No longer are you going to do your human will. You're only going to do God's most holy divine will. This is what God is looking for. This is what God is, is desiring. Okay, knowledge of the truth written about the divine will. Okay, so... These these this th these truths in these thirty six volume are, are are extremely important to know. I mean, God is asking us to read and to study and to put it to practice. So, again, what do you know in volume seven? What can you repeat to me that Jesus said in volume nine? What can you say is the most important thing that you read in volume twenty eight? Yeah, this should we should know these inside and out. Uh, again, if you if you don't know it, it's because you're not reading, you're not studying, you're not putting it into practice. It, it's very essential that these knowledges that we know these knowledges. So May sixth. Excuse me, volume twenty six, May sixteenth, nineteen twenty nine. How the knowledges of my divine will are the army. The acts done in the divine will, the weapons, its light, its royal pal palace, the ministry, the sacrosanct trinity, the divine ardor of, for establishing its kingdom, the divine need, its silence, uh, the sorrow of its secrets. So Louisa says, continuing in my usual abandonment in the divine fiat, she, she, all she wants 
is the divine will. And if you see the pictures of Louisa, she's reading the volumes. In the books, I told you before, her volumes had her thumbprints on the pages. She was studying this. She was, she, this is complete abandonment. This is, this is her doctorate of doctorates. This is what she studied. This is what she knew. This is what she lived. And that's what we should be doing. I, Louisa, was feeling concerned about the privations of my sweet Jesus and oh how my poor soul moaned under the infinite weight of that sorrow that makes all created things say, where is your Jesus? Jesus who, who so much loved you. Ah, uh, you feel that Jesus sustains everything. You touch his beauty and that Jesus has strewn all over creation. You see his immensity that you cannot reach. And while you are, you see you are nothing other than the marks of his steps that in passing by he impressed upon all things created by him. But he is not here. And you run and you search for Jesus. And we will accompany you. We will moan together with you, Louisa, to make you, Louisa, find Jesus whom you want. See, all of creation... She's one with all of creation. And see, this is not a vision. It's not an apparition. It's not a locution. Louisa is in the beatific vision. Her life is Jesus. And when she doesn't see Jesus, she says, I am living dead. We, on the other hand, we have no understanding of that. Because, you know, how, how, how short or how long a time it is to stand in front of the Blessed Sacrament. I mean, to adore him, to love him, to praise him, to thank him, to glorify him. Our mind wanders very quickly. Our love is very little. Louisa was so in love with Jesus because where Jesus brought her, one with him. And I, Louisa, feel like everyone speaks to me about Jesus with sorrowful notes. This is the, this is the, the animals, the vegetables, and the minerals, the leaves on the tree, the blades of grass, the grains of sand. As they echo in my poor heart, it is tortured by our sorrow, and I cannot express my I cannot my I myself cannot express. The impression was such that I wanted to go out of my usual state, the state of victimhood. She was she was literally dying. Meanwhile, my lovable and good Jesus surprised me and throwing his arms around my neck, told me, My daughter Louisa, what's wrong? What's wrong? Calm yourself, calm yourself. How can this be? Do you perhaps not? Do you perhaps want to go out from within the army of my divine will? Look, what an orderly, form, for, formidable, and large army, such that it lines up within your soul. It will not easy be for you to get out. But you, but do you know what this army is? The army is all the knowledges about my divine will. In fact, having formed its royal palace in you, the divine will could not be nor was it decorous for the divine will to be without an army. This army we, Triumph God, have issued from our, from our divine womb in order for them to form a cottage, to defend, and to all stand at attention so as to make known to all who our fiat is, their divine king. How the divine will wants to descend with its whole celestial army into the midst of all peoples, past, present, and future, in order to fight the divine will the human will, but not with weapons to kill because in heaven there aren't these deadly weapons, but with weapons of light that fight in order to form a divine life of my divine will in souls. So where is this army of the divine will? It's in Louisa. If you want an army to fight for you to defeat your human will, where do you find it? It's in Louisa. The army of the divine will is found in Louisa. Why? Louisa has all the knowledges of all the truths that were written in these 36 volumes. And if you're one with Louisa, you have a uh, an army that can conquer everyone and everything. So we'll end there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.